booktube i have been reading all the bookish things there are a number of reasons why we all read but most of us do it to escape the ugly world that we live in and to escape it to these magical fantasy worlds that we just have so much fun in but many times there also is another reason to read and that is to open our eyes to different perspectives and different things that we didn't know were happening in this world objectively horrible things that we need to know about so that we can collectively help make these situations better. And as why it continues to grow, we see more and more books that talk about these sort of tough subjects. And so today I'm going to be talking about five books that I think talk about really important subjects in a creative or unique way. And books that also deal with tough things that we have to face every single day. If you guys enjoy this video, I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. So subscribe for frequent videos. And now let's get on into the racks. The first book on my list is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This book is about Star, who is a black 16 year old who witnesses the death of her friend Khalil by a white police officer. Khalil's death soon becomes a national headline. And while almost everyone thinks he's a drug dealer and even Star's best friend thinks he had it coming for himself, Star knows the truth, that he didn't have a gun, that he had something that looked like one. And so this book is about police brutality, racism, Star standing up for her community while also endangering herself. And it's about that entire struggle. This book is just so, so popular in book two, and rightfully so. Andy Thomas has a simple yet effective writing style, and she creates some of the best characters and families in YA. And this was her debut book, and I don't think she'll ever get one as popular as this one. But this book obviously talks about police brutality and racism, which is a very, very present thing. Martin Luther King gave his speech almost, what, 40, 60 years ago? And we are still being racist. It's about people seeing black people at a grocery store and clutching their purse a little more tightly. It's about that kind of problem in our society. And Angie Thomas deals with it in a very interesting and compelling way while also telling us just how wrong this is. And this book is just so, so, so good. It's about how corrupted the system is, how this cycle of poverty just keeps and keeps on running, and how the people in charge aren't doing anything to fix it. I feel like that's a major thing with so many world problems. They can be fixed, but the people in charge just aren't doing anything about it. And that's what books are these are trying to accomplish in this world. The next book on my list is It's Kind of a Funny Story by Ned Vizine. This book is about an ambitious New York City teenager named Craig who's going to this really, really tough New York school, but is just feeling so anxious with himself. And so one day he checks himself into a mental hospital. He's finally able to confront the sources of his anxiety while realizing that people are more than the sum of their parts and that nobody else defines who you are for you. This book deals with a very important subject and that is suicide. And although this book does deal with suicide, it's also just a funny, happy book. When you really talk about this book, you're talking about a book that talks about humanity in such a fun and unique way. Craig is just the best character. He's funny, but he's smart. And the characters that he interacts with are just so unique in their own way. And just seeing that story just makes your heart warm so much. And it really shows you that you are not alone that your life is valuable. And I feel like this book has saved so many lives. And that's just so, so amazing that books and YA can do that for people. You will just fall in love with all of these characters with the writing style. If you have not picked up this book, by means, go do it. It is a bigger book, but the font is really, really large and it flies through so quickly. I was in a reading slump while reading this book, but I just, <laughs> I cannot recommend this book. The next book on my list is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. This book is just so popular, so if you have not heard of it, and it's set in Nazi Germany during the Holocaust, and it's told by Death, who has never been more busier, and it follows Lisa, whose brother died, and so her mom leaves her with a foster family, where she eventually learns to read and becomes the book thief. However, these are very dangerous times, and so when Lisa eventually has to hide a Jewish man, things turn for the worst. Obviously, this deals with a huge important event in our world's history, the Holocaust, when millions of innocent Jews were killed due to one single man. And it also just talks about death in a very unique way. It is told from the perspective of death, and that really creates a completely new layer, and we're able to see so many different stories in this book. And it's a very well-crafted and well-written book with a lot of metaphor, and it really shows you the horrors of this place, while also showing you a story about humanity that really gives you hope again that things can turn out okay. And while there is so much sadness in this book, it's just a really, really important book to read. This book will break you in so many places, 
and it won't even try to repair your heart. Just read it. Just read it. The next two books on my list I'm going to count as one because they both deal with the same subject, and that is The Bone Sparrow and A Long Walk to Water by Linda Sue Park and Anna Frylian. And both of these books talk about refugees. This, is, this one is about Salva, who is a lost boy in Africa who's destined to cover Africa on foot. And this one is about Subi, who lives in a detention center and dreams of beyond the fences. On one day, he meets Jim, who is from what he calls the outside, and a romance forms between them. Both of these books talk about the horrors of being refugees. Now, the potential for refugees' lives to be as good as ours is almost none. They're both very simple, short stories, but they just portray these struggles thousands of people worldwide are going through in a very poetic and simple way. Both of these books are about humanity and the government and how humans are just precious, amazing things that all need to be on an equal playing field. And they're also just really, really great stories. The final book on my list is Love, Hate, and Other Filters by Samira Ahmed. I actually read this book for a readathon, so I will leave the link to it in the description or right over here or right over there. This book is about 17-year-old Maya, who is a good Indian daughter who her parents just expect to be paired off with a Muslim boy. But then there's the world that she wants going to film school, living in New York City, and pursuing the boy of her dreams. But one day Maya's world is torn apart when a horrific crime that was perpetrated hundreds of miles away turned Maya's community against her with bigotry, fear, and just utter hatred because of Islamophobia. And Maya must find the strength inside herself to know that she does belong and determine where her heart lies. This was just an amazing story. Obviously, I related to it so much. There were just so many things that I just related to on a personal level in this book. But even if you don't relate to this book, I just think it's a really, really powerful story. I wasn't even born here when 9-11 happened, but I've seen on the internet just what horrible things happened to the so many innocent people and how bigotry and Islamophobia are truly real. And I just feel like, racism? Why? Why? Lead your own life. Don't try to mess up an innocent person's life if they were not even related to what happened. There are millions of Muslims there and one just crazy person does not represent all of them. But this was just a really, really powerful story about friendship and pursuing your dreams. And it's just very well written. And I feel like it's so underrated on BookTube. I never hear people talking about this book. And also this flies by, obviously, I chose it for a readathon. I know what I'm doing here. I don't really, but I'm just gonna say that anyway. All right guys, so that was five books that deal with important subjects. Technically, it was six, but I mean, the more, the better, you know what I'm saying? So, if you guys enjoyed this video, leave it a like, but more importantly, leave it a comment. Subscribe for videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, and I will see you next time with another video. Bye. By the way, I am super excited for the next video, and I think you guys are going to like it a lot.